I was having such a good time and, you know, I was consistent, you know, three, four days a week. He was like, well, hey, I also teach uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Why don't you come try it out? I was like, okay. So, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, I trained Taekwondo. Now now I'm training Muay Thai. I know some stuff. And then we go into jiu-jitsu. I get on the ground, and it's like a whole nother world. It gets My world gets turned upside down completely. And good afternoon. Hi, and welcome to this edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. Today, we are live in the studio. Now, normally, the program comes to you on uh, AM 640 at FM 100.7, uh, taped pre-recorded but today we're going to go live have some live action here in the studio and hopefully not too much action with my guest although he's quite familiar with live action when it comes to uh, martial arts and my good friend eric ingram eric good afternoon welcome to mid-south viewpoint thank you for having me how long have we known each other oh goodness i don't know as long as as long as I can remember, <laughs> I mean, a long time. Yeah. Uh, your your parents have been longtime friends, and I've known you guys. I watched you grow up. I think I remember when you were a baby. It's kind of hard to believe, yeah. but uh, you know, one of the exciting things was to to go and see you make a commitment to a very beautiful young lady. Yeah. Has it been two years now? Close, May twenty fifth. You're coming close to that yep. second anniversary. Your wife Hannah, mm-hmm. beautiful outdoor wedding. You know, right by the lake. Yep. What a wonderful time that with the with the barn, the, you know, set up and the whole celebration of you and Hannah. What's married life been like for the past two years? Oh my goodness, it's been incredible. Uh, it's been awesome. Um, <laughs> we've been loving it. Uh, you know, I, I hear so many people say, "Oh, the first year's the hardest," and I'm like, "Really? All right. Well, I'm excited for all the other years because our first year we didn't feel like was was hard. You know, there's those little adjustments of of, you know, living with each other and learning each other and who sleeps on what side of the bed. But uh, we <laughs> what got about all the that. toilet paper? Do you decide which way it goes, up or down? Uh, as long as there's toilet paper there, we're both good, and we haven't <laughs> run out and forgot to get it. <laughs> Some of those little things can become irritants, but really you kind of need to just kind of set back with not a whole lot of expectation and learn to mm-hmm. learn to learn each other, really, I guess, you know? I've been married close to in May is our anniversary coming up on 32 years, and so I got like about 30 years on you. But <laughs> hey, you know what? It keeps getting better. You know, there's a lot to learn, but uh, being married is a wonderful thing. Well, listen, one of the reasons I asked you to come in today was to talk about something that I believe is really on a lot of parents' hearts. It's a matter of fact, Eric. I was looking at some statistics uh, before you came in, and it's estimated that 160,000 children miss school every day due to fear of attack or intimidation by other students. That, according to the National Education Association, one in seven students in grades K through 12 uh, is either a bully or a victim of bullying. 56% of students have personally witnessed some type of bullying at school. 71% students report incidents of bullying as a problem at their school. One out of 20 students has seen a student with a gun at school. Uh, Bullying can take on a whole lot of forms we know and uh, types of behavior, uh, physical, verbal. And, of course, now with the cyber world, we've got this cyber bullying is another, you know, uh, another hot thing going on too. But so many parents don't know how to take care of a situation, right. you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they want to. They, they feel trapped, you know, when their child comes home and realize that there's somebody else that's making life hard for their child. Right. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's sort of an epidemic, you know? It just, especially with social media now, because people can sit behind a keyboard and they're, they're very powerful behind a keyboard when there's nobody in front of them. But you also have those aggressors at school and kids can be bullied by everybody. They can be bullied by other schoolmates. They can be bullied by family members. They can be bullied by brothers and sisters and things like that. So the most important thing when it comes to handling the issue of bullying is building self-esteem and confidence and giving children the ability to handle those situations Um, And just really being able to empower them to confront it and to not be bullied, you know, to really be able to stand up for themselves um, and to not be afraid, you know, and that's 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 where we we're really wanting to address is how do we how do we build confidence, self-esteem and allow a child to be able to stand up for himself and to stop being bullied. 
Now, you are the owner of Ingram's Martial Art, uh, Martial Arts School, Martial Arts Gym. What's the official title? (laughs) That's right. Ingram's Martial Arts uh, and Urban Fitness Kickboxing. Um, So... Yeah, we, uh, we're a martial arts school. We're a fitness kickboxing facility. We're, uh, uh, we wear a lot of hats. Um, but yeah, pretty much um, martial arts, fitness, weightlifting, a little bit of everything. Now, what would you say percentage-wise, as we read all some of these stats here and you look at uh, students, school-age kids might be coming to you know your martial arts uh, school, uh, what percentage would you say are parents that are concerned about some of these issues when it comes to bullying? Oh, it's huge. Um, I would say it's not like it used to be. Um, I think not that bullying wasn't around before. I think we're just much more aware that it's it, that it's going on. I think uh, it used to just the old thought was sort of, well, everybody gets a little bullied, you know. There's, but never nobody really thought we could do stuff about it. And bullying is just getting progressively worse. And um, so I get a lot of parents that are calling me going, I really want my kid to have more confidence. I really want my kid to be able to defend themselves. Um, and not, maybe not as much that they're being bullied currently, but the fear of being bullied is, is definitely there. Yeah. I know I grew up in a single parent home and I remember, uh, you know, some of the early elementary school years, uh, you know, kids would, if there was a big bully, you know, they would meet the person they were bullying after class, uh, after school in the schoolyard and they would just fight it out, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I know it's a lot more intense. It can be more intense today. Uh, than some of those schoolyard fights. But uh, one of the things that uh, I did was got involved with martial arts when I was probably uh, a junior in high school. And uh, there was a, uh, a studio, a Taekwondo Korean type, you know, martial art was uh, was available for me. And uh, I got involved with it. I really loved it. And it really helped me in, in a lot of ways. And it helped me with uh, the confidence, self-esteem. And it wasn't just an issue of me to be, you know, I'm a bad guy, you know, I'm real tough. It wasn't that at all. I think what, the more you get involved with martial arts and the more you, you work out and you, you have the, the, the um, you know, you, you, take, you, you do what it takes to, to, to be proficient at, at the art itself and mm-hmm. understand it, you actually have a higher respect for other people as a result. Did you, have you found that out? Oh, most definitely. Uh, it's really funny. Some of the most humble people I've ever met in my life were through martial arts. Uh, because they don't have anything to prove. Exactly. You know, we get on the mat and we train and and we know what we can do on the mat. So we have we have no reason to go out there and bully somebody or do anything like that because we already know. Yeah. You know, we we figured that out on the mat a long time ago. <laughs> you know, we we're very confident in what we can do and uh, and the effectiveness of what we do, and that that confidence will be pushed over into other areas of our lives. You know, so when someone's picking on us, I don't have to. You know, I don't have to you know, try to manhandle them and stop them and hurt them and let them know who I am because I know inside and that's all that matters. And that gives me the confidence to kind of, you know, take punches and, and not worry about it, just kind of brush them off. Now, are you seeing that, you know, girls are also being receptive to martial arts in, in the same way that young you know, guys are too? Um, I wouldn't say in the same way. It's it's a little bit more difficult to get, to get women kind of into it. Um, but it's crazy because women typically – uh, from from my experience, catch on so much faster when they do, because um, some of the guys they come in and especially if they're bigger and stronger guys, they have this tendency to just oh I can do this and they'll start you know yeah. using their muscle and strength <laughs> and throwing it around and I'm kind of like oh hold down hold down hold up you know just slow down let's work on the technique and and uh, a lot of the women come in and they'll and they'll go oh how did you do that well where all right, so how do I how do I do this? How do I do that? And they ask a lot more questions, and they really want to understand the technique. Yeah. So they catch on a lot faster. Was it for you, Eric? Size? I mean, size wise? I mean, you're not six five, uh, mm-hmm. you know. But I mean, you're in statue, a little bit shorter. Mm-hmm. But was it because you were picked on a lot that you wanted to get involved with martial arts, or was it that you just had an interest in it? How did you? How did this whole journey begin for you? Yeah. Um, so my parents put me in taekwondo, uh, kind of like yourself, when I was young, really young. So. I don't really remember having like, oh, I want to do, I'm sure my parents were like, hey, let's do this. And I was like, let's go for it, you know? Um, so uh, as I got older, though, I got out of Taekwondo and a friend of mine had gotten into uh, Muay Thai kickboxing and, and I was like, man, I, used, I can do some of that. So he was like, well, come to a class. So I came to a class and oh man, I got my butt handed to me. It was it was it was bad. And I was like, man, I need I need to learn this. And that led uh, the same guy who taught that class um, 
I was having such a good time and, you know, I was consistent, you know, three, four days a week. He was like, well, hey, I also teach uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Why don't you come try it out? And I was like, okay. So, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, I trained Taekwondo. Now, now I'm training Muay Thai. I know some stuff. And then we go into jiu-jitsu. I get on the ground and it's like a whole nother world. It gets, my world gets turned upside down completely. I mean, these little guys, like, you know, and I've, I'm not a big person, but I've been fairly athletic, fairly strong and know how to strike. We get on the ground and it's like, I don't know how to do anything. You know, I felt so useless. Um, so I was like, I've got to learn this. So I got into that. And then he was like, well, have you ever tried judo? And I was like, Are you t- there's more. <laughs> <laughs> so then I got into judo and it was, it was crazy. It's been a long journey. I've been uh, avidly maybe four or five days a week, three, four hours a day for Oh my goodness, uh, coming up on a decade, almost 10 years now. So, How does a parent, you know, decide with all of these variety of different martial arts styles from different countries? You're talking about Brazil, you're talking mm-hmm. about Japan, you know, or talking about all these different, you know, styles. I mean, how do you know which style is right for you and for your child? Yeah, there's, there's so many good martial arts out there. Um, but I would say it's less about the style in particular and more about the person teaching. If you can find a really good instructor who really knows what they're doing and can, can really pour into your life and help you understand everything and help you kind of get through, that's, I think that's the, the biggest point is yeah. finding, finding an instructor that's there because they love what they do and they want to pass that on to you, and they're not there because it's how they make a living. You know, you know I it think, needs to be more than I that. I think I found that totally true, too. And one of the th- aspects that really helped me was uh, sometimes in these different martial arts, there can be a religion tied to it, you know, mm-hmm. a meditation or something. And mm-hmm. as a follower of Jesus Christ, you know, I don't want to, you know, connect with that aspect of it. You know, I mean, I, right. I believe in the sport of it and want to do mm-hmm. that. And so to me, that was an important thing, too. Yeah. And I actually had an instructor that was from Korea had been, hasn't been here in the States very long, and uh, but he was truly the sport, you know, teaching the technique of Taekwondo. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a religious base to that, and there was no, you know, meditation or weird kind right. of thing that was happening, you know. Right. It was truly just the, the, the sport of, you know, Taekwondo. Yeah, and I think that's important, and that I think goes back to who the instructor is and, and what is their, what's their goal in teaching. So for me, at my school, um, we're, you're going to come in, and, and my goal is to teach you martial arts, whether it be Muay Thai, whether it be Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, whether it be, you know, whatever it is we're doing that day. Um, my goal is to teach you and help you learn those techniques to help you in your everyday life, to help you become more confident, to help you become more self-aware um, so that not only can you defend off a bully, you can also sort of prevent a bully from being a target. Yeah. Um, and that's really my goal because um, I'm right with you. I'm I'm a solid uh, believer in the Bible and, and Jesus. And uh, so at our school, we actually have a Bible study on Monday nights at our school. Um, so we, we do want to offer that because because for me, that's what life's about. You know, life for me is about following Christ and his will for my life. So we have that there for everybody. But when people come in, we're not saying, oh, th- this, 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 and this. It's kind of like if you're interested in how we live our life, this is this is why. Yeah. And here's a study of Scripture on how to do that. Right. But uh, you will find some of these schools that they're like, oh, well, you have to do all this kind of weird cultish type of stuff. And I would stay away from anything like that. You right, know? exactly. Well, let me ask you about your career as a world champion Muay Thai. Is that? Am I saying the word right? Yeah, Muay Thai. Muay Thai. Um, Are you still the world champion in your division? No, um, that was in 2008. Uh, I won it in 2008. Uh, it was an amateur world championship. Uh, it was in Orlando, Florida. Uh, it's every year. It's IKF's International Kickboxing Federation, uh, one of the largest kickboxing federations in the world. Um, and it's, uh, oh my goodness, talk about some crazy you're put in this massive division and there's all these guys coming in from all over the world to fight and it's a it's an incredible experience but uh, that was in 2008 um, and then I was uh, second uh, in 2009 and 2010 or third in 2009 and 2010 
So yeah. you, we were talking earlier before we went on the air about the uh, ju- the Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And you were telling me in order to get, I think, did you say a, obtain a black belt, it takes yeah. like 10 years? Yeah, um, especially here in the United States, it takes about 8 to 10 years is kind of your average uh, black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Now, there are, you know, cases where people get it, you know, sooner and some old, more, but on average, it's about an 8 to 10 year journey. Yeah. I know you worked really, really hard to mm-hmm. become, you know, a world champion, you know, you know, <laughs> and uh, and you're still working on uh, your Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you told me? Yeah, still working on my black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, I'm, a, I'm a brown belt. Um, I've been a brown belt for a couple of years, so uh, hopefully not too far. But uh, for me, it's not about rank. Uh, it's not about getting my black belt. For me, it's about getting better learning more technique, getting my timing, learning uh, the sport, more of the aspects of the sport. The rank is just an outward appearance of an inward knowledge. So it, if you don't have the knowledge, then... It, it exactly. You know. It doesn't mean a whole lot at all. And I, I, and I appreciate you, you saying that, but I, I guess I want to let parents know that you, you know the credentials are there. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so if, if you come to your school, uh, mm-hmm. you know, come to work at uh, Ingram's Martial Arts, uh, you know, you are going to be trained very well if you come. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I have a black belt in Brazilian. I have a black belt in judo, brown belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I have a black belt in taekwondo. Um, I I did a, uh, I had nine uh, amateur MMA fights. So stepping from the octagon to the boxing ring and anywhere else I've been there. Um, so definitely experience is, is one thing that um, I've definitely had the – Definitely had a lot of experience being able to train with world class people, train on world class stages, and learn from some of the best. Um, so it's a privilege to get to teach people and pass it on now. Now there's a special uh, event coming up this Saturday. Matter of fact, we want to mention uh, at your school at the uh, Urban Fitness Kickboxing and Ingram Martial Arts. And uh, is, are these like two particular uh, schools under one roof? Uh, yes and no. So it is in the sense that uh, Ingram's Martial Arts is where we do all of our martial arts through that. Urban Fitness Kickboxing is where we do all of our fitness, all of our personal training for people just looking to get in shape or anything like that. Um, and what it was is I had Ingram's Martial Arts and have recently bought Urban Fitness Kickboxing, kind of merged the two businesses together. Okay. So. Okay, tell me about Saturday. This Saturday, April 23rd from 10 to 4. Yeah, so this Saturday, real excited. We were doing an open house. Um, so the goal of this Saturday is to give people an opportunity to come to the gym, see what we're all about, and hopefully learn some really cool stuff. So uh, we... We want people to come see the gym, see what we're about. So what we did was we decided, you know what, let's just make everything free the whole day. Let's just make everything free. So we don't we don't want people to have an excuse not to come um, because we believe there's lots of value in what we do, uh, and for people we want people to see that. So uh, everything we do that day is free. We're doing um, a lot of fitness kickboxing classes. We have four 30 minute fitness kickboxing classes that day for people if they're looking to get in shape, lose some weight in a fun environment with energetic people. Uh, it's also super fun. Um, so we're doing a bunch of those. We're doing prizes, giveaways. But what we're most excited about are two classes in particular. We have a self-defense class at one o'clock for all adults that are wanting to learn, hey, how do, I, how do I not be a victim? How do I learn to defend myself in these circumstances? What are the things I need to look for? How, you know, what's gonna make me more aware? So we're really excited about that. But then what we're most excited about is at 1030, we're doing a bully prevention class um, to teach kids what, does, what is a bully? Like how, do, how, like, how do we define what a bully is? And then, all right, now that we know what a bully is, what are the steps that we take to stop from being bullied? So we're really excited about that class. It's at 1030 that day. Um, because for us, that class is what's going to make a difference in kids' lives. Right. You know? And how long would you say it takes a, a kid to be proficient enough to be able to have the confidence they need? I mean, how much time in the, you know, working out, coming to practice, and doing the things that you you ask of them, mm-hmm. uh, would they get to that place where they would feel, have the confidence they need? Well, that's um, it's a very difficult question because 
I mean, we have so many different kids that, that learn at kind of different rates. Some kids pick up on it very, very quickly. Some, pid, some kids need a little bit more time. So um, I would say a year, uh, six months to a year, um, for them to not know the techniques, because it's more than knowing the techniques. Yeah. It's being able to perform the techniques. And that's what we're about. We're not about just, hey, here's some moves. Once you can do them, we'll slap a belt on you and you're good to go. No. It's more like, no, how do I do this in a high stressful environment and still be able to pull off all the technique and it takes time and this is really you're, you're really talking about helping to build uh, habits in someone for a lifestyle really yeah a lifestyle ch- kind of change a mindset really mm-hmm. would you say well yeah because if if we can teach a kid how to be more confident and have more self-esteem then they've conquered something they know they know how to defend themselves here and there and they're not worried about you know being bullied or being this and being that, and they can just take advantage of more of life. You know, they're not, they're not living in fear and doubt. They can take, they can go out and they can take those, um, those decisions and, and just say, you know what, I can do this. I have this confidence. I have this self-esteem and they can, I mean, I think kids will go further in life by not having that fear of, well, what if, you know, instead of this, what if fear, why don't we turn it into, well, how do we conquer that? All right, I conquered it. Cool. Let's move on. As we mentioned, there is a high percentage of kids that are afraid to even go to school, you know, because they're being picked on. And and, and sadly enough, it can get to a point where a child just feels hopeless Mm -hmm. to a point where the suicide rate is pretty high when it gets to that level. Yeah. I I remember in in school there was a, a young boy, and he just got picked on all the time. You know, he got transferred to another school. Mm-hmm. And finally one day, you know, I think he, the only last hope he had was um, his dad. And he and his dad got into an argument. And then his dad left the house mad, came home, and he had taken his life. You know? Man. It was such a sad thing. And uh, so it, we're, we're talking about something that's very serious. Yeah. And I know there's parents right now probably listening to our program, Eric, that are thinking, you know, I'm wondering if my child's at that point right now because they have really shut down. They're just not the same person they were because of this one individual or a group of people who are picking on my child. And I just don't know what to do. Yeah, and a lot of kids will go internal. So they'll, they'll, they'll hold it in because they feel that, you know, they can't, they can't lash out or anything. They don't, you know, so they just go internal and they just kind of let everything build and they don't have a response to when these kids are bullying them and they just feel like the world's kind of real, real heavy on them. So what we want to do at, in that point is I think the most important thing a parent can do is, for one, have good communication with their child, you know, talk to them and kind of spend time and see what's going on, you know, because if they're not spending time and we're not aware, then we can't address the issue. Yeah. Right. So the first thing is being able to go, is this an issue? And as you've stated in a lot of statistics, it's a good chance it could be an issue going on, yeah. you know? Um, so martial arts especially is one of the best answers for this because it's a way of giving a kid something else to look forward to, something that they can grasp and they can hold on to and take with them through all of these different little circumstances and things. So whenever, when the world, when, when their parents or everything's kind of mad at them, they can always kind of cling back to, well, I can get through this. I can get through this. I got through this other thing in martial arts class the other day. And, you know, all those kids were positive and my coach cares for me. And, you know, so um, being able to have that environment for your child, I think is is uh, irreplaceable. Yeah, I think you're totally right. It's a part of that uh, that positive reinforcement that a parent can give, and, and really, uh, sometimes a parent can only do so much, you know, mm-hmm. and they need that outside help to be able to to give their child that mm-hmm. encouragement, and that's what you you know provide perfectly, you know, through uh, your uh, Ingram's Martial Arts. Uh, again, this Saturday, April 23rd, from 10 to 4. Uh, free seminars all day long for everybody listening right now. We want you to come. Uh, let's give the website out, by the way. Before we do that, let's give the address so people can find you. Yeah, we're at 1662 Shelby Oaks Drive. So we're right down off of uh, Sycamore View, um, uh, just a couple hundred yards from the Crocker Rail right there. So if you kind of know where that is, Crocker Rail is usually a pretty good landmark. So uh, you get to work out and then go eat, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, 
Uh, you cannot work a bad diet, though. So that's right. Just, you know, that's my little two cents there. But uh, most definitely, yeah, you can work out and then go celebrate uh, working out and everything. Um, so, yeah, we're at 1662 Shelby Oaks Drive. Uh, you can call us, 901-386-2050. If you have any questions or any trouble finding us, just give us a shout, and we can you know, we can definitely help you get there. I went to your website today, too. Want to give that address? Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we have two websites. We have uh, urbanfitnesskickboxing.com, and we have ingramsmartialarts.com. And the Ingrams has an S at the end, so ingramsmartialarts.com. Um, or you can, on Facebook, we have our event. Uh, for our open houses on Facebook. Uh, so you just go to Facebook and you type in Urban Fitness Kickboxing or Ingram's Martial Arts and we'll pop up and you can find that event there. Eric, what would you say to a parent whose child is, that you know, they're not really that athletic, you know, mm-hmm. and they, they're, the parent's thinking, this would be really good for my child, but the, I, how do I get them to get there? You know, how do, how do I, yes, they're not normally active physically, right. you know, how do you get your child, you know, to come and participate? Um, encouragement, letting them know, hey, we can make this work for you. You know, just because you're athletic doesn't mean you're defenseless. And what's great about our program is we've got plenty of kids that aren't naturally athletic, but they have so many other skills that they bring to the table. So where they might be way more technical, they're not as athletic, but they're a lot more technical. And for us, our technique should, should work for itself. Right. So it's kind of like, you know, you, if you have a good golf swing, you swing as good as you can, but (laughs) <laughs> if you don't hit the ball well, it doesn't matter, right? But That's you get exactly. the ball that can hit. You get the kid that can hit the ball well, because he has the right technique and form. It goes a lot further. So, um, it's the encouragement. That's a great, great word. Well, listen, friends, don't forget now, there's going to be an open house at uh, Ingram's Martial Arts, 1662 North Shelby Oaks Drive. Uh, the phone number to call is a 901-386-2050. Yes, 901-386-2050. That's the name number. Hey, by the way, the first 50 people who come out get a free T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, free T-shirt, and uh, we've got door prizes and stuff at lunchtime. We're going to have great barbecue around lunchtime, so... Hey, Eric, thanks so much for what you're offering and helping to build that confidence and self-esteem in our young people living in the 901 and beyond that can come and participate. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate Appreciate it. it. Friends, that's all the time we have on this edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. Our guest, Eric Ingram with Ingram's Martial Arts. We'll have to have Eric come back and talk more in the future. That's all the time we have on this edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. I'm Byron Tyler. Thanks for listening. Hey, we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.